What is up my peeps? Welcome back to some more Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I am your host of course, Mr. Spinoza X. September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed the murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief of officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicide down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use the floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by the, this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in the girl's hands, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a, a statue? Floor plans added to the court records. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. As soon as a phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why, we had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm, that very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross examining what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Smack! Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradiction in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says nothing, something's wrong. It works a lot of times. Heh, I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. All right, here we go. Cross-examination time. So, if you're in the in the cross-examination, if you're not sure, you know, what evidence to present, just press on every single detail. It, it works. 
but sometimes every cost examination doesn't work that way and pretty much uh, at the end of their testimony when you cross examine it'll pretty much put you all the way back to the, their their uh, beginning statement on the testimony so you would pretty much have it, it kind of leaves you hints uh, every time you press so like of, you get an idea of what to present Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just gotta really like pay attention um, to what Phoenix says right after pressing the person, and pretty much that's probably the wrong one to press, one statement to press on and stuff. Like, see right here. Yeah, you see, like it, it kind of gives you a hint of what to do there and everything. Like, it'll give you like, oh, maybe this is the one I have to uh, press them, uh, present about or something like. You know what I mean? But uh, this right here, this one is the correct one to press. That's it. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in pink claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious. She sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough. Detective Gumshoe, do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Gah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. And here we go again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the finger, victim's fingers. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have one, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about the vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know, I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin this cross-examination. And cross-examination again. I won't press on every um, statement. I'll pretty much show you guys which one you gotta press or present. So in this case, uh, before she died, yeah, this one. So you pretty much present the, uh, the autopsy. Detective Gumshoe? There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey. That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those loyal tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has a point. 
Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain the autopsy report? When... It was a day after the murder? The prosecution's point being? The autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was also immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth! I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham! How could you give me a faulty report? Huh, I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe... I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What? Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts this as evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor. The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn! This isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl we saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service, wink. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanting winking. Aw, uh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the hearts of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th, when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like, in my hotel room. Tee <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Faye and Company Law Offices. Hmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like 9 o'clock a.m. at night. I looked out at the window and then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman like dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her, and, and she hit her. Then the woman with, lo with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy, wink. Hmm. Well, your honor, I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. 
I don't see no need to trouble the witness any... Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, you will cross-examine the witness? I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have the feeling Edward doesn't want me to. He has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. How do you know she was a defendant? Huh? Well, you know... She, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Hold on a minute. The testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Did you really see the defendant at all? Ooh. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes. What is the meaning of somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fey, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentioned neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Roar. What are you trying to say? I mean, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May? The court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Wink. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did see everything. I did. The victim. The woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock, um... That kind of statuey clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does that a the accuracy of my report not startle you? I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. 
Please begin the cross-examination. Alright, so... At this point, the thinker is not a clock. So, you already know what to do. Once that, uh, right there, this statement right here, you present the statue of the thinker. Miss May? What you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh, uh... The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with no with trivial questions. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murders with these questions before. Well, only once. Hmm. Hmm. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That That's... Because I heard it. Yes, I heard it said it say the time. So, you've been to the offices of Faye and Company? No, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of Faye and Company where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. Can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because. Okay, so this is a really, really tricky one. But the correct one is it couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly... Just take a look right now. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see, the clock was empty, it couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. Fat? Well, Miss May? Tisk tisk. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock was empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? 
if it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright. Can you prove when the clock was removed? <laughs> Impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves the clock was removed is the phone. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, hoo -hoo, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. <sighs> the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you, the clockwork isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27am. Your Honor. I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. M -m 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 well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what the store was that again? I got, I got, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. So the witness had seen it be, had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? The witness claimed she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce the evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Yes, the thinker statue. It's simple. This clock was never in any store ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Mm. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Ooh, ooh, oh, oh. Mm. Oh! What is it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves. 
This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Oh, he, he, oh. Oh, 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 silly me. D did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Tee hee, wink. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have any opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... The witness had never held a clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let me see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. And this is the moment where you present the wire trap. Have a look at this. Ah, uh, oh, that. Uh, <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright. Please explain to the court what that is, what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Ooh, ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objective overruled. It troubles me that our witness was possession of a wire trap. Wire trap. It is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say the, we the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is the cell phone again. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I, I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La la. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May! Shut up! All of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! Uh, it's no fair! All you ganging up on me like that? Oh, I'm... So I'm the bad girl? Is that it? Is that it? Ah! <laughs> that did it. The court seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why did you tap her phone? Uh... Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippy tapping er irrelevant? Yeah, she's saying exactly what Edgers wants to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. 
While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull all that off, wouldn't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course, I can, and I will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so, the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why? That's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. Room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy, wink. Ergo, this was not on the scene of the time of the murder. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Here testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fay, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away? There's no way I can win on this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy as a witness. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? Well, what's the reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consist to calling the wit this witness. Condition? If Miss Miss April May Alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. It, that is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? It's a risky one, but accept it. Alright, I've got nothing to lose. Except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm? Fool, you fell right into my trap. Uh oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court called the hotel boy to the stand. I believe you're ready for the witness's testimony to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received su your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, 
The witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Here we go, guys. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel in business for generations. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered that iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, May Maya will be finished. Okay, so at this point, just press on every single statement. Um, pretty much not a single contradiction in this statement and stuff. Um, so just press on every single one to pretty much advance and you guys will pretty much see why. So we're just going to go ahead and fast forward throughout the whole thing and stuff and you will see, uh, what we will have to do next. So. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is... Is that it? Tusk, tusk. Finally, you understand. The This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the sand. I can't let this happen, can I? Wait! Please wait! Yes? Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. Alright, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? This one's a tricky one between these two right here. It's check-in. Tell me about check-in. Tell me about when you checked in, Miss May. Oh, alright. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She just my type of girls, so it was really disappointing, really. I see. Wait, excuse me, what exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir, but even I'd have little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Ah! Oh, uh, rather quiet. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the uh, good barista there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. You fool. I've done it. I've won. 
Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room. That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof! Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet, Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My... What a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late. I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the, pre the presence of the other man from this court. Oof. Upstart amateur. Daddy's accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all for today for the trial of Mayor Fay. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 224 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number one. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Really? I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. It sent shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A, a lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happens to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway. This case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of Miss April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from. May testimony added to the court record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in the detention center and it's up to me to set her free. Thank you guys for watching part two of episode two of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. This has been Mrs. Pinot's X saying good night, good morning, good day. What a time you guys are watching this video. 
and I will see you guys on the next one. All right, everyone. Bye.